The world received a show of US military swiftness in 2011 when President Obama ordered the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound. In 40 minutes, Navy SEALs carried out an operation in Pakistan that ended with the Al-Qaeda leader dead. 40 minutes to complete a decade-long manhunt. And it was all coordinated from half a world away. Ever since the attacks of 9-11, the US government has been focused on developing the capacity to carry out strikes exactly like Operation Neptune Spear, the operation that killed bin Laden. The ability to launch operations anywhere in the world within minutes after receiving intel can be a powerful deterrent in the geopolitical arena, especially in the war on terror that the US has waged for over two decades now. But in the past, conventional military capabilities were limited when it came to prompt strikes. The quickest response capable countries had was a nuclear missile. But everyone at the table knew that that would be the beginning of the end. So the US focused on developing its conventional non-nuclear options. Though the operation in Pakistan showed how far US development has come, the use of troops on the ground meant that there were years of training and preparation beforehand specifically for that occasion. What the US, and now other governments seated at the geopolitical big kids table want, is the option to launch a strike anywhere in the world within an hour of receiving intel. No preparation needed. These capabilities manifest in three fundamental ways, so stay tuned to find out all about them. Because today, we're looking at Project Prompt Global Strike. The idea for worldwide strike capabilities, like most civilian military endeavors, started in the Cold War. The earliest example was Reagan's proposed Star Wars system. Satellites placed around the world armed with weapons able to strike and neutralize Soviet missiles anywhere. In the end, this plan remained in the realm of science fiction, succeeding only in scaring the Soviets enough to deplete their military spending. The real development started later on in the 2000s. The Bush administration proposed two different projects to create conventional global strike capabilities, the joint DARPA Air Force Falcon project and the Trident submarine launch ballistic missile. The Falcon project, started in 2003, aimed at creating an aircraft that could reach hypersonic speeds or five times the speed of sound. Armed with non-nuclear missiles, the hypersonic cruise vehicle could reach anywhere in the world and bomb it within an hour, in theory anyway. The project fizzled out towards the end of President Bush's term. However, the Obama administration renewed work on it, work that is still being done today. More on that in just a little bit. The other project aimed at developing global prompt strike capability, the Trident submarine launch ballistic missile, experienced a shorter lifespan. The idea was to take existing technology that supported nuclear strikes from submarines, replace the nuclear warheads with conventional ordnance, and be able to strike at any target, anywhere, any time. However, the Bush administration eventually scrapped that idea. They feared launching an intercontinental ballistic missile by CBM, whether or not it was nuclear, would trigger the Russian nuclear defense warning system and start a nuclear war. One purpose of conventional global strike technologies was to lessen reliance on nuclear weapons and deter the chances of sparking Armageddon. Right away, this project ran into its first and quite substantial roadblock. The US needed to carry out these strikes while demonstrating to China and to Russia, to adversaries with advanced launch detection systems, that they are not nuclear. Ideas include changing missile design so they fly at a lower trajectory than standard nuclear missiles, and allowing representatives from China and Russia to inspect prompt global strike missile sites. Today, the question is still awaiting a fully satisfying answer. And yeah, global security question just left dangling out there with no certain answers. It makes you sleep well at night, doesn't it? Current research and development have led to breakthroughs in important areas of Project Prompt Global Strike. Since traditional ICBMs are likely to trigger launch detection systems and risk the outbreak of nuclear war, the US military focused on making missiles that can reach hypersonic speeds. The US military calls them Advanced Hypersonic Weapons, or AHWs. Hypersonic is classified as 5 to 20 times the speed of sound. That's 1 to 5 miles, or 1.6 to 8 kilometers, every single second. In November 2011, just several months after Operation Neptune Spear killed Osama bin Laden, the US Army put on its own show of swift military might. They launched a hypersonic missile from a base in Hawaii and struck the Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands over 2,300 miles away. The whole test took less than 30 minutes. The normal flight time from Hawaii to the Marshall Islands is over five hours. Another US test of HWs was carried out in 2014 from Kodiak Island in Alaska. 
This test proved to be less successful, resulting in operators triggering a self-destruct only four seconds after launch. A thermal protective cover on the outside of the craft threw off the missile's trajectory. A review board found nothing was wrong with the booster rockets or the hypersonic glider's body, though. Good news for the development of prompt global strike capabilities. Bad news for anyone that the US actually deems a threat. Another way the US military is working around the mistaken nuclear ICBM barrier to their prompt global strike abilities is the development of a hypersonic aircraft. Remember the Falcon project from the Bush years that we talked about earlier? Well, those theories are all but a reality now. In April 2010, the US Air Force conducted its first test of the Hypersonic Technology Vehicle, or HTV-2. Unfortunately for DARPA and the Air Force, the test flight only lasted nine minutes. It splashed down off the coast of Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands, the same location that was actually targeted in the Army's AHW test. Despite the quick test, the US military claimed it achieved many firsts in the development of hypersonic aircraft. Among them was maintaining a GPS signal while traveling 3.6 miles per second. Experts estimate that at that rate, the aircraft could make the trip from New York to Los Angeles in 12 minutes, or fly from Sydney to London in 49. It's something that is kind of hard to comprehend. Although the HTV is still in its testing phase, the US military sees it as a key part of their prompt global strike capabilities in the future. So far, the US military has shown how the sky's the limit for their airborne prompt global strike technologies. To understand the last area of development, though, we have to plunge into the deep depths of the ocean. The last area the US is developing is the submarine option. Though the Bush administration scrapped the submarine idea in the 2000s for fear of sparking a nuclear war, the concept has stuck around. Maybe the existing technology makes the submarine option a simple area to develop, or maybe the US Navy was feeling left out of the fun. Either way, in 2012, the Pentagon announced that the platform for prompt global strikes would be submarine-based. Confused onlookers scratched their heads. The last they had seen of this option had been on the cutting room floor of the Bush administration. To make matters even more confusing, the development of said submarine-based technologies was soon delayed after that announcement because of the same nuclear war-starting fears. However, the Navy pushed ahead slowly with its own hypersonic ambitions. In 2014, the Navy announced it was interested in awarding two $5 million contracts to evaluate technology options of submarine-launched hypersonic missiles. According to some sources, the U.S. pursuit of sub-launched hypersonic missiles is an effort to work around a stipulation of a treaty with Russia banning such missiles from being ground-based. The motor for sub-launched hypersonic missiles and the actual long-range hypersonic missile both underwent successful tests in 2020 and 2021. U.S. success in developing these prompt global strike capabilities, though, has landed them in deep water in other regards. Analysts claim that the technologies being tested are leading to a new hypersonic arms race. The international response to U.S. hypersonic tests has been less than favorable. China and Russia have invested significant resources and made their own developments in response. Since 2010, China has been working on its own DZZF hypersonic ballistic missile. The Chinese military has conducted multiple test flights since 2014, of which only one failed. Rumors abound that China is working on hypersonic capabilities that do not rely on ICBMs as well. Russia is also working on developing the U-71 hypersonic boost glide system. It's claimed that the upcoming S-500 missile defense system would include anti-hypersonic capabilities. Another hypersonic missile project underway is a partnership between Russia and India. At this point, the only thing faster than the hypersonic missiles seems to be the development of these hypersonic missiles. Thanks for watching.